A note from the manufacturer, this drone is specifically designed for professional FPV racers with advanced skills and technical knowledge. This drone operates like a high performance race car built for extreme speed and agility and requires a pilot who can handle the power and complexity. It is not intended for beginners or casual users. Think of it as the difference between driving a race car versus a standard vehicle. This drone demands experience and expertise to operate safely and effectively. Let's rip it. <laughs> this is the Newbie Drone Hummingbird V 3.1 race spec. Before we get into it, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. When Newbie Drone offered to send me this drone, I started researching it. It looked like a normal, lightweight, 65 millimeter drone. I thought it was gonna be just like my Mobula 6 I bought a few months ago, and oh, how wrong I was. I read the warning at the bottom of the product page and I was skeptical at first, but also a little nervous because I'm not a drone racer. I've been working on my skills in the simulator, but I mainly do cinematic drone tours and a little bit of freestyle. I would consider myself more of a beginner, maybe intermediate pilot when it comes to racing, so I was unsure if I would even be able to fly this drone properly if the warning was true, especially since the camera angle was so steep starting at 35 degrees. And I normally fly from zero to 15 degrees, depending on if I'm doing a drone tour or flying freestyle. Luckily, because USPS is so slow right now, I had a few weeks to prepare myself. I hopped on Velocidrone to practice with some tiny whoops when I saw they had the exact drone in the software I could use to practice with. This was huge for me. So I started practicing with it. And honestly, that's what really made me scared because in the simulator, the drone was powerful, more so than the other 65 millimeter quads available. I spent hours in the simulator practicing with the drone and started to get more comfortable with it to where I could get through the course without crashing it. Then the drone finally arrived and I thought I was ready. Opening up the package, it comes with the instruction card with how to bind the drone, newbie drone sticker, extra propellers, another parts bag with an extra canopy and prop removal tool, a bag with extra screws, and then the drone itself. The drone frame feels super solid, like it can take a hit. I like the design of the canopy where it wraps around the camera. It makes me feel a little bit more confident that I'm not gonna rip the camera off the drone if I crash. And there were a lot of crashes, but more on that later. When looking at the specs of this drone, it only weighs 16.5 grams. It's got the Hummingbird 0702 to true 30,000 kV motors, an A3 connector compatible with the BT 2.0 batteries, a 25 milliwatt VTX, built-in ELRS receiver, and it uses 1S batteries. This thing was truly built with one goal in mind, to race it. And the price, it only costs $89.99. Now it's time to get into binding the drone with my controller, setting it up and flying it. The setup process was super simple. Plug it into Betaflight, bind it to your controller, set up your controller settings, adjust your rates if you need to, and then it was time to fly. I didn't set it up right in Betaflight for my goggles, so the first few actual flights, I couldn't see anything in my goggles. Man, I cannot see with this but once i got that fixed it was time to put my skills to the test we figured it out as always the problem is me <laughs> that seems to be a common theme um in any of the fpb drones that i fly is that um your boy is 90 percent of the problem so let's try this again let's go okay so we're just gonna we're gonna cruise and chill for a second I will say this drone does have good power so far, but I don't know what I was expecting with all those warnings, but it's not as crazy as I thought it was going to be. Now, yes, I can see where this can get out of hand very quickly, um, but that warning seemed a little bit intense, but let's go. Obviously I'm flying low and slow, Nothing too crazy. Okay, got our first crash. Not supposed to disarm. That's what people tell me. Oh, let's see if I can get out of here. Lord have mercy. There it is. Look at us go. Okay, so let's try the track for real this time. Um, yeah, so there is, this thing does have power and it does want to go. Let me just say that. But I do feel like that these, the rates that it comes with are pretty decent. Like it doesn't feel super squirrely or anything. 
and there we go. We did one whole lap of the course. So let's, you know, keep working it and we'll speed it up a little bit. Just get kind of used to this. Oh, once again, I am only turning left. I literally created a whole racetrack based on turning left. I tell you what, guys, I am not. I need to turn right more. We all already know this. And if you don't know why I need to turn right more, then you need to check out some of my shorts because we talk about it in those. Okay. So we're going to go through, go through. Oh. At first, the drone didn't seem as crazy powerful or as scary as I had thought. Keep in mind, I had been using only the Hummingbird in the simulator for about two weeks. I did a bunch of flights, and as I kept flying it and pushing it, I could tell this drone could get real rowdy real quick. I decided to fly a few packs on my other Tiny Whoops just to do a comparison, and that was when I saw the power that this drone really has. My other Whoops felt a little sluggish and heavy compared to the Hummingbird, when previously they had felt like they were extremely powerful. It's amazing when you're flying different drones drones that are for different purposes, how much of a difference it makes. The more comfortable I got with this drone, the more fun I was having. I only have five 1S batteries, and I'm pretty sure in my first flying session, I had to recharge each one of them three times, which is a much longer session than I normally do. I normally only fly five packs a day on my Tiny Whoops, but I just couldn't get enough of this drone. While there are a ton of things I like about this drone, there are a few things that I would change to make it a little bit better in my opinion opinion. I love how smooth and how fast this thing flies. To put it into perspective of how fast it can go, my flight stats at the end of each flight say my average throttle was 30% and I felt like I was going so fast. It just means I have a lot more room to push this drone as I get better as a pilot. The frame feels solid and I never worried about breaking it when I crashed, which I did so much as you can see. Morning. Oh, done mess that up. Oh, shoot. I like how the TPU camera mount wraps around the camera instead of it just holding on to the lens, but the camera is able to rotate a little, which you will have to twist back into place sometimes. And speaking of the mount, I wish the camera angle could be less, but honestly, if you're racing, you don't need it to go less. You just, I just need to improve my skills. The software it comes with is amazing. I love the sayings that pop up in the goggles when you crash or go into turtle mode. It just makes it feel a little bit more like a video game. The battery connector, I'm not a fan of. I wish it was angled to make it a little easier and the battery tray isn't as tight holding on to the batteries, which I thought would be an issue, but I haven't had a battery eject yet. So I don't think it's actually an issue. Just something to know. Another thing to be aware of is that the solder pads newbie uses are insanely tiny. So if you need to replace a motor, you will more than likely need to use the soldering pads that are bigger on the other side of the board. The VTX only goes to 25 milliwatts, which is perfect for racing indoors and with others, but that does limit the range. I didn't take it outside to test it because, well, it's been raining and so cold, but also because of the limited range this drone has. But I have no doubts that this drone would be able to blast around a playground if you were sitting right next to it. With the price of the drone being $89.99, you really can't beat it when you look at how well this performs as a bind and fly racing drone. This drone has been awesome because it has required me to push my skills and grow as a pilot. I know I make YouTube videos about drones and fly almost every single day, but there's so much I still have to learn and to improve on. And truly the only way to do that is by practicing and trying things that scare you. I've always told people I'm not a drone racer and I never will be, but I think that was because I tried racing and I wasn't good at it. So instead of pushing myself to be better, I just said I wouldn't do it, which I think is the wrong attitude to have. If I can race a drone at high speeds and hit small gaps, mastering the control of the drone, how much better will I be able to control my cinema? whoops and other drones that I use for work. So over the past few months, I've been racing in the simulator and now using the Hummingbird to race around my house. And I have seen so much improvement and comfort when flying my other drones, allowing me to push myself, try new maneuvers and be smoother
easier as a pilot. I think the biggest takeaway that I've gotten from testing this drone is to not be scared of trying new things and to not be afraid of pushing yourself. When I saw this was a racing drone, I almost messaged newbie drone back and asked them if they were sure they wanted me to be the one testing out this drone. Honestly, I am so grateful that they did because it has opened up even more love for flying drones and the desire to push my skills and grow more in my journey as an FPV pilot. What do you think about this drone? Do you think this warning is justified? Let me know in the comments down below. If you want to purchase this drone, please use the link in the description below as it lets newbie drone know that I sent you to them and it does give me a small commission to be able to keep bringing you videos just like this one. Hit that like button and subscribe if you enjoyed this content. Also consider supporting me on Patreon. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.